Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Eating healthy can really be tough if you have children. And here to show us how to transform kids from picky eaters into food explorers is Dr. Dina Rose, author of It's Not About the Broccoli, Three Habits to Teach Your Kids for a Lifetime of Healthy Eating. And I'm curious about all of this because I have three kids. So this is important <laughs> information to yeah, know. Um, you have you brought a lot of vegetables. So what, it's not about the broccoli? What is it about? It's about <laughs> behavior and teaching kids the skills that they need in order to become adventurous eaters. You know, we spend a lot of time saying, oh, just take a bite, and if you don't like it, you don't right. have to eat it. But to a kid's mind, that's a lot of pressure, because if you do like it, you're going to have to eat it, and maybe I don't want to eat it, and it gets all complicated. So you have to think about the strangest thing you've ever eaten. Like, have you ever eaten anything really weird? Um, yeah. I, so the thing is, is that I'm the picky eater in mm -hmm. the house, <laughs> and my little one is the picky eater. But yeah, I'm looking I'm at gonna what say, you like, have right there. These are edible worms. You, Want one? No. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm you, full. I'm if full, you right? can get me to eat that, <laughs> then that's great. <laughs> okay, but the thing to remember about the worms, and you can have one if you want, no. but is <laughs> is that we look at this and we say, oh, tomatoes, asparagus, yeah. you know, those are sort of normal foods. Just right. just taste it. But to your child, especially if, for the child who's really timid around new foods, the tomato looks just as bizarre to okay. them as this looks to you. So if I was going to say to you, oh, just taste it, and if you don't like it, you don't have to eat it, you'd still be like, mm, mm -mm. I don't think so. So, right? <laughs> so what we have to do is separate out eating from exploring and teach children skills about exploring. Because if I was going to ask you to eat this, you'd probably say to me, well, is it crunchy? Is it salty? Like you'd start asking questions. So that's what we have to do. Help children build up their database of food facts. So when they look at something, they can start making better predictions. And that's why the kit focuses on these really small kinds of samples, right? So Yeah. So you have this tray. I just want to hold it up here. And you have samples of different things. So tomato and a little piece of asparagus here. Right. So the idea is to break it down into something that's not intimidating at all. And one of the reasons that I've got pretzels on the tray here is because children love pretzels and we can start teaching them how to be explorers using the pretzel. So for instance, we can take our magnifying glass, like who doesn't like a magnifying glass, and right. start looking at it and examining, oh, the salt or the color and, you know, get really into it. And then we can start engaging other senses. So for instance, like what does it sound like when you snap it? You know, okay. for a kid, that is helping them build up information and they start to understand that snap gives them a sense of like how crispy the food is going to be. So once we do that, then we can move on to the other foods, right? And actually, if you think about the salt on here as being like a little novel thing, right, we can start looking at the tomato and we can see that. We can see the same kind of thing so on the asparagus. So you're making it interesting and they're learning about what they're eating. They're learning about it, but we're not actually asking them to eat it because, you know, that's hardly a meal. Right. <laughs> you know those studies where they say you have to expose your kids something like eight to ten times before your child will like it? Yes. It might as well be a million times, because most parents, the research shows, give up after five, right? It's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons that it's frustrating is because we mix up eating and exploring. So in those studies, they're giving kids little samples like this. In one study, the children were asked to sample one thirty-second of a tomato. Can you imagine cutting this into 32 pieces? No. And giving it to your kid. So we explore, we can take the dropper, we can suck up some of the tomato juice and we can taste it. We use little spoons because that's not intimidating. And so even if your child is scared, <laughs> we start with touching it or mm -hmm. smelling it before you say, Let's you eat it. ate it. <laughs> That's pretty good. No, I mean, it, this, this is great. How did you come to bring this program together? So I've been working with parents and pediatricians and nutritionists and dietitians, you know, all of speech therapists all across the, across the country for years. And I would start to say to them about this separate eating from exploring, start giving people the skills. And they didn't sort of seem to know how to put it into practice. So it seemed like a natural to give them the tools. But the real key is this book. Because in this book, there are 60 different exercises that show you 
how to do um, a description or a comparison or rate or rank, which one of these three foods is the saltiest or the crunchiest or That's something great. like that. Yes, this kit is wonderful. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show and telling us all about it. And don't forget, Dr. Rose's book is It's Not About the Broccoli, Three Habits to Teach Your Kids for a Lifetime of Healthy Eating. And if you want to learn more and get a food explorer kit for your children, it's pretty cool, you can check out our blog, It's Not About Nutrition. Com. Uh, up next, learn about a Bay Area organization working to empower hundreds of thousands of girls when Bay Area Focus returns.